Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I've got a very special video for you today. We are going to be bro-talking with the man himself, Comic Man Jake. Jake, how you doing? Doing well, Daniel. How you doing? I'm doing great, my friend. It's good to see you out here, man. Uh, I wanted to uh, let everybody know that you had a video that inspired a lot um, of thought. It provoked a lot of thought. For me, I had been planning um, to talk about this subject for some time and then when you when you made that video, I was like, man, it's time. We got to talk about this immediately. So, uh, you know, I'm glad we were able to connect. And um, you made the video on the Young Avengers. And this is something that I think has been growing, not only in the MCU, but plans that I see through confirmation from Disney that will be flourishing, I think, on the Disney Plus streaming service. But have you seen, I mean, what have you seen? Obviously, Maybe some of our guests uh, watching or viewers maybe haven't seen that. Uh, talk to me, man. What's what's going on? So it's funny that 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 video that I made when I did that, that I had just finished reading the comic, The Young Avengers. The uh, I think it's called the Advent, the Children Advent, or something like that. And yeah. I was reading through it, and I was going like, "This would be perfect." And seeing. We know we're getting an, an X Men move. We're going to be getting. They're going to be amping X Men. They have to. I mean, right. But um, how can we, you know, introduce the X Men, but also introduce maybe a younger group, something that entices a younger audience? And I mean, why not the Young Avengers? <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's interesting you say that. Like I, I've noticed that they've been really. Um, driving to push a lot of a lot of youthful characters or characters that are going to be much younger. Obviously, a lot of the older characters are starting to phase out now after like after phase three. Looking at phase four, you know, Spider Man's going to be one of the major players, mm. uh, as opposed to just an ancillary character that is part of the team. Um, and then we also, you know, like in on a secondary note, uh, characters like Cloak and Dagger, which traditionally aren't necessarily kids, have been portrayed as kids. Um, on you know, like if you if you have Hulu, you can watch them there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cloak that. and Dagger, also with uh, the Runaways. That's another team that's yep. very much like and has had tons of encounters with um, the Young Avengers. But they got their show on Hulu, which the first season I really liked. I haven't seen the second season yet. We watched the first episode. Um, is a little okay. Ish. It's, 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 it's iffy. It, it was it's it was iffy. it was okay. I mean, I was just like, okay, I'm watching this so I can figure out what Cox is on. I was like. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of hard at first, but I mean, I was like, okay. Yeah, man. I mean, like, w the characters that are from The Runaways, I wasn't super familiar with. In fact, I watched your video on The on the Runaways to kind of get uh, a handle on who they were from the comics. Because there's people that can tell you what their powers are, what their names are, a little bit of their backstory. But when you read the comics, you get to know that character. You yep. know what I mean? And so that's something that I've always appreciated about your channel is that – um, if there's a if there's a book or a series or a comic that I haven't read that introduces characters I'm not familiar with, that that's a one way that I can really get to appreciate that character. If we're going to be dealing with something like fan casting or something that's you know involving potential future movies, things that we talk about that kind of crosses both of our our lanes, you mm -hmm. know. Um, well, with the Young Avengers, man, like there's they a lot of them are coming out of other other comics or they come from characters that come from other well-known comics mm -hmm. and a lot of them have roots with like their parentage um most of them actually have parentage that comes from characters we may have already seen in the mcu and i think it's really interesting to watch that line up with the the shows that have been confirmed for the disney plus streaming service uh-huh I know what you're I mean, getting. At. I know what you're getting at here. You're talking about the you, the, the, the wand, the what? What do they call it? The Wanda Vision something? Wand, I don't know what Wanda Vision, baby. So that yeah. one is weird, right? Because we know from Infinity War that he's, you know, that he Vision got killed. Yeah, Vision's dead, and Wanda's been grieving that. And traditionally in the comics, um, that sets Wanda absolutely freaking off. Like she just yeah. she loses it after that point. Oh I yeah, mean, her. Her powers like they they make her powers in the MCU like powerful like powerful but like yeah. comic wise she's like <laughs> she changes the whole universe. <laughs> she literally rewrites reality. Oh yeah, it's chaos, and that's her man. power. It's, it's like 
it's unbelievable. And so like, I thought they did a good job in Endgame, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have a little bit of a standoff towards the end. And she's like, the other ones, it's like three of the most powerful heroes in the MCU going toe to toe with Thanos. And they're holding their own for a little bit and it kind of goes Thanos' way. But when it comes to her, when she finally shows up, it's like, "Uh uh-uh, dude, you better back up. And I I felt like they did her some justice there. Granted, they haven't they haven't up till now. Up mm-hmm. till now, she's been so struggling with her powers and with controlling them that you know her emotional instability, which is in character for her. Mm-hmm. But it's you know we know how powerful she is as comic fans, and then not seeing her get there has been a little frustrating for most people. Stacked with the fact that she didn't have her classic costume, which a lot of people were fans of. You guys got to. And that's the thing I don't like about it. I mean, yes, I am. I would cost myself, classify myself as a, a comics uh, purist sometimes. So sometimes I'm like, yeah, I do want to see the costumes, but it but really, that doesn't work I mean, in a PG thirteen. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to pull that off. One, no. Two, I mean, <laughs> but seeing something redesigned is always kind of something I enjoy, and that's why I really do enjoy. Yeah the MCU because, and I say it every time I do it in my videos, like it's hard to do an MCU comic book movie equation, which is the stuff you're talking about where I take a comic book and, you know, say this is what the movie's based off. If you want to get more into it. Um, and it's hard because the MCU is so loosely based on these series that it's like four or five or six comics that they're basing it off of. And I've got like, and it could be something from like the, the, when they started to like now. So, Um, but seeing the redesign of how she looks, I mean, Hey, it works, (laughs) right? Yeah. And it it totally works. And it works in the context that she's not going to look and you know, I, I I don't mean to be offensive, but she's not going to look like a prostitute. No, you know, like (laughs) essentially in the comics, it was basically, um, it was almost like an underwear runway model, you know, and that's. Yeah, with with that mask. If they yeah. had given her some sort of a mask, she, it might have looked a little like, dorky. I but... agree with you fully on that. She looks like a prostitute. Like I, I didn't think about <laughs> it until now. <laughs> I've been reading so many comics, but I'm like, I got a daughter, and I would not yeah. want her to wear that. No, dude, I would be like, yeah, no, I'm like never. you go, you go get changed back, please. Yeah. Go yeah, no, something. you're gonna go you're jacket, gonna cost please. you're gonna be cosplaying Elizabeth Olsen's version there of the you character. Go. Yeah, there you go, right? <laughs> it's a more family friendly version. Yep, definitely, definitely. But but it's man, like what what I appreciate that like I'm more of a, a comic purist myself. Like where I I feel if it if it feels like anything but the source material, it it actually pulls me out of it more than the dorkiness of actually having those classic costumes. You know what I mean? So like if I, and I have a buddy that we always butt heads on the same subject is that Wolverine should not have the, the classic costume because it's oh, the wrong. stupid. And he says it's the stupidest thing ever. And for me, I'm like, I am going to be absolutely furious if we don't get some semblance of an adapted costume that is like Wolverine's costume, because that was the whole point of the, 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 um, uh, forgive me. I'm forgetting his name. Simon. Uh, no. What's his name? What? I, have, I have no. I don't know where you're that, going with this. I'm that, like, hold on. Basically, Simon, who, that X X one all the way till now with like Logan and uh, and Dark Phoenix Wolverine up to that has always been an adapted costume. They didn't do classic costumes until they got into the first class era and they started to get a little bit closer to comic adaptation. Whereas oh, okay. before it was it was like black leather and he didn't have a mask they they combed his hair up like wings. Okay, yeah, you know? I remember that. And so it was a little close to the to the comics, but it was far enough for me that it was like I was always like, come on, just give us the costume. Like the nerd that I feel like I am, mm-hmm. I appreciate Power Rangers to the nth degree. So colored costumes and vibrant you know stuff is not a big deal for me. No, but did you see what was it? I think it was in the Wolverine? He, they did hint at that costume. Yeah, uh, or it was. Um, or was it a deleted scene? Like he just he just opened it and it was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't it an. Well, there was an end credit somewhere where they opened the the case. Yeah, and he looked yeah, at it yeah. and he said, nope. I know. I was so mad because I was like, come on, it's right there. It's it's honestly like to me when people say it's gonna be too ridiculous, I say Spider Man. 
and I say Batman, and I say Doctor Strange's cape, and I say, like, you talk about literally any any idea you can take about mm-hmm. a comic book character and their their costume or their suit, even the ones that have been adapted, it's ridiculous. A guy dressing up as a bat with a cape at night punching criminals, it's we've grown to love that. We would grow to love Wolverine in the costume. There's no difference. It's like what yellow's gonna throw it all off. Batman has yellow. You know, it's it's yeah. a different. It's a flip. You know, but Spider Man is wearing spandex, red and blue spandex. You know, it's not that crazy of a notion in my head. But the I, I agree about certain ones for the sake of appropriateness when it comes to like Scarlet Witch or you're gonna do. I, I felt like Mystique should should go with the white or black costume. You know how and she not always the full had nudity. That. Yeah, not the yeah, not the bodysuit. The bodysuit yeah. was it was it, weird. I mean it It makes sense. It makes sense, but like but the like the thing about transform. the thing I think I think about Mystique on that one, and I'm not I mean, I'm totally against the nudity thing, but I mean character wise, wouldn't you wouldn't that be a part of her whole skin? Like the the costume would well, yeah. be having to be a part of the skin. I don't know. I'm just trying well, that's to think. what I mean. That's kind of what I mean, though. It's like, does does she want herself to just be naked in blue form? Because when she's formed as another person, she forms herself with clothes. So then, why in her blue form is it so important for her to be naked? Is it, you know is what it I mean? what, like what Magneto said? He was looking for perfection. He was looking for the the her being original, like her original self. So maybe yeah. that's why. I I don't know. Maybe well, Magneto's I mean, a person. It was I don't also know. kind of pillow talky. <laughs> <laughs> they were about to do it. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, but whatever. That was so like my I, back to back to the topic yeah. is that, you know, like we I can go for days on these tangents. Oh, I know. But I, I also want to respect your time because I know the time difference <laughs> um, with uh, with the Young Avengers. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we have we have certain characters that we could that are going to be part of the young avengers if they choose to do the young avengers which we think they are like for instance um iron lad yep there's elijah bradley um who is the patriot Mm -hmm. there's um cassie lang scott lang's daughter which we already have in the mcu so she's she's already there and she's and she's already old enough to be that that was the thing that i I was so surprised when i saw that in endgame i was like holy cow they aged her (laughs) Yeah. Holy cow. I mean, she grew up. <laughs> right. And, and it's was huge. Like, it was that five year gap yeah. that I think everybody needed. Like the mastery that's going on here, like the 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 chess game oh, Kevin of Biden. creativity. Just, just just he he has everything planned out. Like he has to be like an encyclopedia of just Marvel yep. knowledge. Like I Bro. really would love to sit down and be like, where do you is it just like you like do you have a collection? I, I'm betting you he has a collection of just everything. And that's Bro, you get. know he's got to. I mean, he's been working on almost every major Marvel film that's ever come out. Mm-hmm. So he was on. He was a producer on the X Men films. He was a. Um, he was a. I think a co invest a co producer or something, or like he was involved somehow with Sam Raimi's Spider Man trilogy. Oh yeah. Uh, like he's been in the background of all these films, helping these things get made because he's the nerd. He's the guy. Oh yeah. And and. Now we get him overlording this whole mm. masterpiece. And like, there's a lot of people that are like, is Marvel done after Endgame? And I'm like, dude, heck no. Have you seen their confirmation list of Disney Plus? It's yeah. about to blow up. And like, for um, WandaVision, everyone's like, what do you mean, WandaVision? Isn't Vision dead? The point is that the characters, like Thomas Shepard, which is. Thomas Maximoff or whatever. He's Speed, right? He's the yep. he's the Quicksilver yep. twin son of Yeah, he's uh, Speed. Wanda. He's Speed, yep. Yeah, and so there's Speed and Wiccan. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't actually have kids. She wills them into reality. Yep. And so they're kind of her offspring through like the the I guess it's the digital life or like the the programming, the coding of a vision and her magic created these children and they weren't hers. Like she didn't bear them herself, Mm -hmm. but they existed into the universe and they're twins just like her and her brother. And, um, and so like their whole origin story is already 
wrapped in a bow, ready to be plopped into the universe in WandaVision. Vision doesn't even have to be part of it because those kids are her vision. That's her dream. Yep. You know, and so like that's that's where are they going to go with with her character if not to say either a House of M, which yeah. would be freaking <laughs> raw. <laughs> but it won't happen. It won't happen that fast. No, we we'll have to wait like another probably five years maybe i would say at this point we're probably looking at three and a half before okay, we get some sort too. of I'm, I'm just thinking the long game i don't know yeah well because i mean they announced the five-year plan for the x-men when when disney bought fox but the t's and the i's were not crossed yeah so they said you're probably not going to see anything for five years it's been almost a year since then i'm guessing it's going to be like three and a half years before we start seeing characters really arising you know, mm-hmm. either in cameos, in the end credit scenes or something, team ups. Um, but it could be a lot sooner than that. I mean, because if they're willing, they could drop them on those shows on the Disney streaming service. Oh, yeah. Those those were announced during the process of the buyout. And so obviously they might not even have had the plans written out all the stories drawn out for those things. They weren't shot. It's not like it's too late to adapt those stories. Once the T's are crossed, which was back in February, they're ready to go. Like they're ready to bring some mutants into town, you know? And so that's, that's the cool thing about that is that, um, you know, they, they use the, the legally cheating characters that are also <laughs> event. They're Avengers yes. characters and mutants. They use those. Technically they could have done that with beast also, yep. but they didn't. Because he was part of the new Avengers, I believe, or the Secret Avengers, one of those two. I think I think it was both. It was and both. Oh wow! <laughs> I think because yeah, because he was a he was a member of the new Avengers, and I I thought it was the Secret Avengers, and um, uh, I could be wrong. We'll have someone fact check this after. Yeah, that. someone's gonna tell us that. Yeah, and then he's a member of Sword too, which they just teased. In. Uh, I don't know if I should say it because it might be too soon. But there's we wouldn't. We, 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 I'm gonna give you a big fat. It's already kind of spoiler well, alert. I, I, well, I've seen it, so I mean, you've seen you've seen. I've, okay, oh so yeah, I saw. I do. I saw it on Sunday. Saturday. Uh, blah, 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 Saturday. <laughs> All right. Spoiler alert! If you guys haven't seen Spider-Man: Far From Home, you've there's some warned. really important. There's Easter eggs that are tied into the end credit scenes. So mm. you're not gonna know this just from watching the end credit scenes. You're probably gonna watch Screen Rant or Jake or myself, and then you're gonna find out through these channels. So if you haven't seen far from home, you need to see it. It's freaking awesome. But they tease sword at the end of that, which is the, it's like, it's like the intergalactic extension of shield shield is the planetary defense set there to protect the people from these like massive superhero scale problems. Whereas sword is an offensive and defensive, um, like system of, intergalactic government influence to protect and challenge any like threats that might come your way. So it's like earth versus the rest of the universe sword handles that stuff on earth shield handles that, you know? So it's like shield is small sword is big. See, I didn't, you know what? That was the one thing I didn't know. I was like, I was looking at that. I was like, so are they setting up? I kept on thinking they're setting up secret empire, right? Secret empire. Right. And then you're like, sword. I'm like, I did not even think about that. (laughs) Well, the truth is they could be doing they could be doing Secret Empire, oh, Secret yeah. Invasion, Secret Invasion. They could be doing um like any number of sword things. Mm-hmm. Uh Kang, they could be doing uh, they could be setting up uh the actual Kree scroll Kree scroll war instead of making it a historical event, they could bring it into the here and now yeah. because that would involve the Young Avengers. Yep. So, like there's so much like the Young Avengers are they're part of like three they're primary. Fanboys. That's what they. That's, huh? what they, that's what they classify themselves as. They're fanboys, and they, they are. They, 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 they That's what they classify themselves as. Like in the, I think it's Advent Children. That's what they're called. That's the series called Young Avengers Advent Children, and right. in that one, like that's when that's when Wiccan and uh, Speed are looking for their parents. They found they right. found this and they're looking at this and like we really think we are the twins of yeah. one, that's like, after- one of Maximus is our mom. Yeah, that's and, after Cassie points out. She's like, "You guys look so identical. You could be twins." And then they realize, "Holy cow, you're right." Mm-hmm. And then they go on that that journey. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of it's a cool journey. I mean, they could introduce Doctor Doom that way too because he's in there. Yeah. Um, 
Kang pops up or Iron yeah. Lad pops up at the end. Iron Lad Iron Lad is what brings them all together, bro. Oh, in the first so, one, yeah. Hey, but he, he's he, like he's the stuff. And that's they've been talking about that with Endgame and with Spider-Man Far From Home. The whole like message in there to the fans is who's going to be the next Iron Man. Is it going to be Spider-Man? The answer to that is no, it's not. Mm-mm, not can't. really. I mean, he, no. can, he can't. He can build his own company and stuff, but he's wait. But they have him way too young. He's still in high school, in college. Right. In, I mean, in the college years, he does get his. He makes his own company, becomes yeah. essentially like a Tony Stark. But that's under the influence of Doc Ock. Um, right. Is it like Parker Industries or something? Yeah, Parker Industries. That's it. Yep. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, I, it's way too soon for that. Mm-hmm. And not only that, it's something that he kind of he kind of builds out of almost obligation eventually and it's not something that mcu spider-man's ready for no not by not by a long shot no way so i could definitely see iron lad being that because i mean heck he looks like him one two it just i can't think of two (laughs) two he adapts the iron man armor so you know he comes back so that's i don't know if you're if you're aware but his, his name is nathaniel richards he's a descendant of reed richards and so oh, wait he, a minute, wait a minute. He's a Fantastic Four character that they couldn't use until the Fox deal closed. So, I had no and idea. he's the one that brings all the young Avengers together. And they've already been p- putting all these young Avengers into the MCU without using the Fox related characters like Wiccan, Speed, and Nathaniel Richards. But now that the Disney Disney bought Fox and we're getting the Disney streaming service, look at all the shows they're making. Oh, they've yeah. got, they've got. Let me let me just. I think I've got them off the top of my head. They've got the WandaVision, which sets up both Wiccan and um, and Speed. They have the Falcon and Winter Soldier, which will inevitably talk about Elijah Bradley, even if it's a cameo, even if it's an Easter egg. I guarantee you, <laughs> it's Captain America's story. It's related. It's the two guys closest to Cap that's going to carry on the torch after. And I mean, Elijah Bradley is part of that history. I didn't think. I never thought. I I knew it was for the the Winter Soldier and uh, Falcon, which they just announced. The guy who uh, directed. Uh, John Wick is writing it. Oh, thank way. God! Oh my gosh, dude! So I have not watched. I have what? not watched the John Wick. I've only watched the first John Wicks. I haven't watched the other ones yet. So don't bear with me. I gotta watch those other well, ones. But um, I haven't. I haven't seen them either, man. But I've seen some of the fight scenes on YouTube. Oh, they're amazing. And dude. I, I've been dying to see it. I just haven't had the time. But I, I have read all the reviews, and it is critically praised as the best choreography for fight scenes. Oh yeah. Period. Oh yeah. Period. I mean, I was watching this. I watched it at first and going when I watched the first one. Sorry, going on a tangent, but uh, I was like, so some dude's dog died and he's mad. Okay, that's the basic of the story. And then I watched it again. And I was like, but those fight scenes, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, I am so thrilled, man. I I really do hope that that's what that's part of what they do is where they have to go and explore, not only who they are in relation to uh, yeah. Captain yeah. America, but also the effect that Captain America's had on the world. Like, I hope they get into the U S you know, the U S soldier. Um, I hope they oh, get yeah. into, Oh, that'd um, be awesome to see him classic Patriot. And then him, you know, I hope they, I hope that's, I hope they really dive into the effect that that had on the whole world. You know, what would be cool, man. And I, I know that they, they probably will not do this, but another super soldier, my favorite super soldier other than Captain America is the black cat, the black cat, is a super soldier that that she uh, her father was a thief back in oh. in the day. He was a child when Captain America was getting the serum, but he was trying to do his best for the United States to like pick put recycle the cans and do all this stuff that they were like you know come on help the troops. And the Nazis were te- were telling kids they they infiltrated the United States and were telling kids that uh, if you want to help. You, you need to try to help us. There's there's other people here, meaning Shield, that they were convincing the kids were actually undercover Hydra agents uh, or or Nazis, hmm. and they needed to get the formula. So they were training kids to go in and try to spy on Shield for them. And this one kid was Black Cat's dad, and he had a photographic memory, and he was really skilled at acrobatics, climbing and stuff, being stealthy as a child. So they got him. They convinced him to do his duty for the U.S. Mm-hmm. And he goes and he t- he was there 
when Captain America got the serum and Dr. Erskine was there with the board and everything, he saw the formula and memorized it. And when the whole place ended up going up in flames and destroyed, there was no evidence of the yeah. original serum except for the photographic memory of this child. The child then goes back to the Nazis and then they they reveal to him that they are Nazis and that he actually just helped the, the Nazis against uh, you know, the, the allies. And so he then runs away. He, he manages to escape the Nazis and he kind of goes into hiding and becomes uh, a criminal to kind of scavenge and, and provide for himself. But he lays low for the rest of his life. He eventually has a daughter. This daughter is Felicia Hardy. And wow, Felicia Hardy. About this. Holy cow. <laughs> I had no idea. I, I, yeah. When you said black cat, I was like, wait, Felicia? I'm like, hold on. I'm like, yeah. she's not that old. <laughs> no, she's not. But she's yeah. she's approximately the age of what Peter Parker yeah. was back in the 90s run. And so according to the original lore was that her father had had the knowledge. He was the one that had the serum after everyone else did not have it. But he knew that if it, he saw what happened to Captain America, he saw Captain America lead the troops to victory. And he saw what happened with Red Skull from a distance. And he knew that if this got in the wrong hands, it would be catastrophic for the world. Mm -hmm. And so he, he basically went into hiding and became a criminal. He became the black cat, the ultimate stealthy um, thief. thief. Yeah. And so he ended up taught, teaching his daughter the same things, but then Kingpin captures Felicia knowing that there's one man out there that knows the serum. And so he, he tricks or he, he basically tells him, look, you're going to, you're going to give me the formula and you're going to give me the right formula because I'm testing it on your daughter. And so if you give me the wrong formula and it's going to kill one of us, it's your daughter. So he then has to give an adapted version of the formula to kingpin to test on his daughter and that's how she becomes the black cat she gets super strength super agility that's why she can jump from building to building blah 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 but wow i just learned something guys holy cow <laughs> i have yeah these guys this guy's go holy cow i'm i'm usually the one explaining stuff and he just got something on me <laughs> no, dude. it's just but it's exciting to me because just like how far from home ties everything back to iron man one mm -hmm. when they kick off this show falcon and winter soldier if they want to talk about like, for instance, the black cat, they can tie it back to the original MCU Captain yeah. America. So so can Elijah Bradley. Yeah. Elijah Bradley with the super soldier serum, there was only, you know, there was so many people trying to get that formula and recreate it. The Hulk was a result of a failed experiment. Yep. Um, you know, black cat was one of them. Uh, Winter Soldier was one of them. You have a lot of people that tried to recreate that and maybe either failed or only got a partial version of the formula. No one could do it absolutely right, but there was a version that was also successful to a degree, and it was Elijah Bradley's grandfather, which was Eli Bradley. I, or um, I'm sorry, it was um, – uh, shoot, I forget. Eli Eli Bradley's grandfather was I Isaiah. Was great, I thought it was his great-great-grandfather or something. Uh, maybe. It might have been, but I thought it was his. I thought it was his grandfather, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I couldn't and, remember. It was. It was. It was, either, it, was his, it was his descendant. I remember that. I just. I can't remember if it was his grandfather. I. I. It, it might be his grandfather. It might be his great great grandfather. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, and so though that's one way that they could tie that back with the Disney Plus streaming service, but also, um, like we said, Cassie Lang is already there, mm -hmm. but Kate Bishop is a name that comes up a lot. So Cassie is going to become stature. She's she's someone that takes Iron Man's I mean sorry, um Ant-Man's tech and uses that exactly the same way Scott Lang did. She basically mm -hmm. takes it and now she can grow and shrink and it's the same thing. Yep. Um with with uh the Kate archer Bishop. Kate Bishop. Yep. She gets trained by Hawkeye. We know that Hawkeye is basically done. He wants he wants no part of the business anymore. He wants to retire. He wants to be with his family. Um and they kind of give a hint in in Endgame when they were when they were showing the, you know what where did Clint's family go? Showing yeah a girl who was shooting a bullseye who had the same physique, the same kind of look yeah. as Kate Bishop, and I was like, hmm, yeah, probably before, not going to be an actual, you know, separate person. But hey, they could definitely make that person Kate Bishop. That's what I saw. They, right. I mean, they have two avenues. A, they could adapt it. Mm -hmm. And make his daughter 
the the quote unquote Kate Bishop character, even though that's not what I think he'll do, because I don't think he's going to want that life for his daughter. But what will happen, I think, is probably he's going to in his retirement. One thing he's going to do just because it's his passion is he's going to give archery lessons. <laughs> so when they have the Hawkeye TV show, he's going to be trying to stay out of the light. He's going to be trying to stay out of the the work, right? He doesn't want to be involved, but he's going to have someone that he's going to disciple mm-hmm. or he's going to be giving instructions to teaching some, some, maybe it's his daughter's friend or something. They're going to adapt the story and it will be Kate Bishop. I believe, I think they're going to give us Kate Bishop and he's going to teach her. And I think in his show, Hawkeye's show, if it's not a flashback series like Budapest or something, Would or even awesome just, it would be awesome. Everyone wants to see that. But I think that they're probably going to have a fresh story moving forward mm-hmm. in the wake of him losing Natasha. He doesn't want to be involved with superheroing anymore, but he will teach. And he's going to teach Kate Bishop. She's going to get into trouble and he's going to realize he's going to have to mentor her. And she's going to be the new Hawkeye, hmm. setting up the young Avengers. Um, also, uh, I know we're getting a little close to when we kind of keep, wanted to stop. Keep on going, man. I don't... I, I... I like I said, you want to keep on talking, we can keep on talking. I don't care. <laughs> All right. those guys. I'll try to keep it I'll try to keep it brief. But um like we talked uh we talked about characters like uh Novar. Uh I don't know if you're familiar with Novar. He's a character that wasn't part of the actual team team, but he involved himself with the team at during certain storylines. So he's a Cree and he was like some I think it was somehow infused with like cockroach DNA or something stupid like that. No, nope, no, nope, I have no idea who that is. I have not read. That. Looked, I have not read anything on that one yet. He looks almost identical to Speed, like the white hair, the green jumpsuit with the white. Like mm-hmm. he, he looks almost identical to Speed, but um, he's like super zen and whatever, and he's really wicked strong. He's a Cree, but there's also Theodore Altman, Teddy Altman, and that's Hulkling. Really so up? Hulk. Hulkling is a half Cree, half Skrull. And so both of those characters, Novar the Cree, and then Theodore Altman, half Cree, half Skrull, both of those are clearly set up by um, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel teased that up perfectly um, by allowing there to be a huge time gap from the end of Captain Marvel, where we see the Cree and the Skrulls in the same movie, heavily integrated into the story. They don't like each other. That's the whole point of his storyline. But um, basically Marvel in the comics is a man. They adapted that to be a female in this, in Captain Marvel. So Captain Marvel is a female uh, mentor figure to Captain Marvel in Captain Marvel. Um, then at the end of the movie, she's gone from the end, like mid nineties all the way until approximately end game, which is af- after that five year gap. Mm-hmm. So, they could be a prim- procreating. They could have been doing a lot of things. Now I see. You. I see where you're getting that. Okay. Exactly. There's there's been enough time for them to incubate a child, basically a half Cree. So the the in the comics it was a scroll princess, and it was Captain Marvel. Now I think they're probably gonna flip it because they already gender bent Marvel to be a female. So Marvel was the lady that was like the AI with the Cree, but then she was also on Earth with. Uh, Carol Danvers. Do you remember that? Yeah, like she was. She was the Air Force leader that ended up being a Cree herself. Yeah, that was kind of, that, that 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 that. That was a huge bummer. Oh yeah, was. I was watching that. I was kind of like, <laughs> okay. I was like, wait like, to throw it down the toilet. Please don't. And then when they saw, it, I'm like, oh why? And even my yeah. wife was like, yeah, that was kind of weird. I'm like, it's because it's not supposed to happen this way. <laughs> It's not supposed to happen. They 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 went for gender bending a very important comic book character just to throw it down the toilet. Like I was like, are you serious? Like oh, yeah. of all of all the characters, like there's a handful of cosmic characters we've all been waiting to see, like Marvel, Nova, um, Adam mm-hmm. Warlock. Uh, you know, um, what's what's the other one? There's like Hyperion, Sentry. There's a few of these guys that are like big hitters. Yeah, heavy, Hyperion heavy is hitters. basically. Superman. Part of the Squadron Supreme, which is Marvel's version of DC. <laughs> yep. It's, if you watch, you look at the Squadron Supreme, it is literally the Justice League. 
<laughs> which is hilarious. Oh yeah. I, I was hoping they would do like Hyperion versus um like Night Nighthawk or something, so that they could basically do BVS, Batman versus <laughs> Superman, but for Marvel. And just like throw it out there like it's not almost like not not even aware of the other Marvel films just to make it. That'd be, <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. the best freaking thing ever. They actually did that in a Spider Man Deadpool team up comic where they actually Spider Man and Deadpool went to a movie, came out and it was the movie was um, Hyperion versus Nighthawk, Yawn of Justice. <laughs> and they were both disappointed with the movie, and they were talking about like uh, they're like his mom's name was all it needed, or something. You know, like they were like joking about. That's all awesome. Of the... I gotta find that comic, man. I gotta find, I gotta start reading that one. That was one of the series I wanted to start reading. So, yeah, we're that's, getting off that's, the tangent, though. Yeah, so so many awesome tangents. We'll have lots more fun about that. But like, um, I think lastly um loki so what i wanted to talk about you finally was loki loki in the in the young avengers comics is a critical character because he's he's part of the team at times Mm -hmm. and he's he was someone that was um kind of a bad guy and then becomes a member of the team he goes from being loki to i cole which is loki spelled backwards Mm -hmm. and how this happens i have it i have it right here um let me see. Uh, it was uh, where? Where did I have that image? Hang on. It was on my email really quick. Let me see if I can pull that up. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So Loki reincarnated. So this is what this is what happened in Thor um, six seventeen. Okay? okay. So it was Thor missing his brother searched for Loki who had returned to life uh, in the form of a young boy and his schemes had his name removed from the book of hell. So in the book of hell, uh, he, he had plotted to get his name removed from that list basically so that he could not be accepted into hell. And this allowed him to permanently cheat death, making him actually immortal. Mm -hmm. Um, Now located in Paris, France, Loki, was a street hustler going by the name of Serur, or in it's the French word for Locke, um, who f- uh, he feigned simple card tricks in front of an audience while an accomplice pickpocketed them. Thor, in civilian disguise, gave chase, resulting in the restoration of Loki's memory, um, but not his past life, with the exception of a guilty conscience for things he cannot remember. So, basically, when he erases his name from the Book of Hell after he's been basically damned um he cheats death so he's no longer there like he's not allowed there it doesn't fit after you've struck struck in your name from the book and so he cheated he comes back he's immortal but he doesn't remember his old life oh he only, i see where you're getting at this i think i see where you're getting at this oh all, all he has is his guilt right and so he feels this burden of guilt like he's burdened with a glorious purpose but it's <laughs> It's he doesn't have the memory of what he did, right? And so, um, now with nothing to lose, Loki followed Thor, who restored part of his identity to him, though he remains in the form of a child. Um, and a- and asked when Thor got so old, to which Thor smiled. Thor took Loki to the remains of Asgard, where plans were made to help, uh, made to help the refugees of the World Tree within the resurrection of. Or with the resurrection of Odin, Loki was frightened away and fled with Thor, who lambasted Odin for scaring him away. Um, running into Iron Man, Loki was saved by Thor, who defended his own reasons for bringing the trickster back. So, Loki, when he when he comes back from the dead, he's brought back as a youth, mm-hmm. and he does not remember his past life because it's before his past life, like age wise. He's before all of his memories. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. So he, he gets a second chance at life. And even though he had he has this burden with no memory of what he did, so he takes the alternate road. And he he is young, therefore wanting to do good, he becomes a young Avenger. Oh yeah. So what happened in Endgame? Well he I mean absolutely he died he died. I mean he yes. literally he's dead. He's dead dead. Like gone. And in Infinity War, he died, right? In yeah. our current timeline. But when we oh, see him again in Endgame, Endgame oh. Oh. the time. Yeah, he so warped. He didn't he? He warped back in time, 
and then he snaps out from there. And so he doesn't have a lot of this like memory going on here, but even if he still can like, so they talk about locked and unlocked um, time travel, right? If the timeline is locked, which means even if you go to the back to the past to change something, it doesn't alter the timeline. It creates a new one. Yeah. Right. So if he is dead in the current timeline without end games interference, he's still dead and his nefarious scheme can still involve him striking out his name from the book of hell. Which, by the way, his sister is in charge of. And so, there wouldn't be a reason why in what was it, Infinity War, why he wouldn't mention the name Hell. He mentioned his his sister is still around. Yeah. Like, just saying his sister's name. There's no reason you would put that in there unless there was something coming up. Exactly. And so, even, and if he is in the past, and he does take that second that second chance when he teleports or whatever, he, it might kick off the series with him starting a nefarious plan to get himself permanently not killable. Maybe he goes to the future and sees that he's able, he, he does die at the hand of Thanos who he was at the time working for. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause at the end of, uh, during the Avengers, the first Avengers movie, um, you see him and he's, he's working with the Chitari. It's revealed to us that this whole time he was working for Thanos the mm -hmm. whole time. So maybe he sees and realizes that Thanos is a nut job and that eventually he's going to have to stand up to him and that he dies. So he says, screw that plan. It's a horrible plan. And he just says, I'm going to find a way to make myself unkillable. And then he goes about that. But striking his name off the book after he's already been dead, you, you, there's only one way to get to hell. You go to hell. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, right. You're, you die. You're dead. Maybe he goes there through a spell or something, but he's there. He barters, comes up with some sort of scheme plan against his sister, gets the book, strikes his name out, comes back, but he's a youth, and he does not remember his nefarious deeds. So <laughs> now you've set up his involvement with the Young Avengers. I mean, like it does. It sounds like a lot because you have you have a couple of steps to get there, but those things have been set up in two different ways through Infinity War, which is the simple road, and Endgame, which is also not that big of a stretch. No. Because no. the timeline still remains. They talked about having a locked timeline. Yeah. Locked timeline means that even if he deviates in the past and he escapes... It with just a, creates a new timeline. You, it's a new timeline. So now you've got two Lokis floating around there. This one is still prime to do exactly what we said. After he's been killed by Thanos, he comes back as a youth. And there, there's your show. The Loki show is about youth. Loki doesn't remember what he did, but he's still, you know, a BA and he's ready to rock. But just with the convictions he had from what he did and no memory. So now you've got a whole nother story. Didn't they say like Tom Hiddleston will be doing like a voiceover or something? He wouldn't be starring in it, but he'd be doing like a voiceover. If that's the, I don't know if that to be, to be fact, because I haven't, I haven't checked that much. But I heard that he was going to make an appearance in the show, but not necessarily star, star in it. Yeah, that's what I heard so too. I heard about if that too. If that's the case, that to me sounds exactly yeah. like that's what they're doing. Is they're going to have a young Loki playing Loki? We might get like Asa Butterfield playing him or something. Even though he's not like a kid, he looks like a kid. He looks like a really tall kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I they, could, they could definitely set this up if they're doing that for that Disney Plus. I mean. Why not do that? Why not build up to something like the, what the like what uh, Netflix did with the Defenders, even yeah. though the Defenders was a flop. But um, right. But like the idea is just yeah. is using these shows, these platforms to create something like their own Avengers. But it actually would lead to the Young Avengers, yeah. and that could then kick them from just the the Netflix. I'm sorry, the Disney Plus streaming service shows, which I'm totally excited for oh, yeah. i love i love shows i can't i love all that like long-term commitment you gotta like tune in every week and whatever that's fun for me so if it's movies that's awesome and i love movies and i don't want those to stop and i hope that they get a movie but if it's shows you get a lot more content out of it you yeah know? get more so, diversity on it. it's always something different you know something you're not expecting a lot of times plus i think they'll be more willing to push the boundary on like um on like relationships and stuff with on the shows with, more with than the Wiccan and Hulk and Hulkling that kind of, yeah, like that kind of stuff. So like if they want to, if they want to develop that or if they want to have like Cassie Lang and 
I can't remember if it was Cassie. Cassie and it's Cassie Elijah. and Iron Lad. Oh, was I, it Iron Lad? I, I believe so. Or it's yeah. I think it was. I think yeah. you're right. Because that's because that's when I read Avon Children, she was like really happy he was there, and he was, and they were all like giddy, and I was like, okay, something happened. <laughs> right. Now, again, last the very last thing I want to I want to mention mm-hmm. is that. Nathaniel Richards is not only the descendant of Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, but in the future he's Kang, right? So he comes back. Kang. He <laughs> he comes, you know, he realizes who he's going to become. And that's yep. why he comes back from the future to to stop himself from becoming Kang. Now, future him is still out there floating around. Just because he comes into the past doesn't mean Kang isn't coming. Kang is still coming. But he's going to try to find a way to erase that future. It's like The Flash. It's like the first and second season oh, of The Flash. It's funny, dude. The Advent Children, that's the one he keeps on doing. He keeps on just trying to, like, let's just change the timeline. We'll just go back and change this. We'll go back. I'm like, dude. Yeah. And then they find out, like, dude, you are starting to act like Kang. And he's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> right. And, like, that's that. That's the fun thing about that is that he, he does – take that mantle like people are talking about like Ironheart Ironheart's cool I don't really care for Ironheart I've never read a single issue don't know any stories about her I just know that she kind of like is a G is like she she shows up she's the smartest person in the room and she's like worthy to wield the armor well you know totally, like, she if I can go on a tangent here she built it. her own armor she Not, oh really she built her own yeah so when Tony Stark in Civil War 2 when he went and got into a coma Two, there were two Iron Man comics. There was the Invincible Iron Man and the Infamous Iron Man. The Infamous Iron Man, which I'm hoping comes into play sometime because if it's awesome, it's Doctor Doom becomes Iron Man. I love. Oh my gosh, Doctor Doom or like Doctor Doom Iron Man. Oh yeah, he's one of the ass, coolest, <laughs> coolest characters on planet Earth. Also, uh, Norman Osborn as Iron Patriot for the Dark Avengers is also. Yeah, really cool, but not as cool as Doctor Doctor Doom. Yeah. no one's cool. who's cooler than Doctor Doom, dude. I have Doctor no idea. Doom. It was it was it was it was really cool because like, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite series. One of the ones I own. Um, I actually got Bendis to sign that one. He wrote it. Um, no way. But yeah. Oh yeah. He's. It was hard to get in line. Like, I had to ask a guy to go and like he had a you had to get a wristband, and they were all sold out yeah. like within like five minutes. And a guy got it, and he didn't have anything. I was like, dude, could you get this thing signed by him, please? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, sweet. And he went and gave it to him. And he was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, but but the Invincible Iron Man follows Riri Williams. And Riri Williams is like just a genius. She's got the intellect of Tony Stark. Yeah. She sees the Iron Man things and creates it. The only thing she doesn't have is an AI. That AI turns out to be, gets Pepper, like Potts gives her an AI and it's Tony Stark. Okay. So Tony becomes her AI. Yep. That's what they. That's what they did with. Um, uh, sorry for anyone who. I'm gonna give a spoiler really quick. Spoiler in uh, for Spider-Man: Far From Home in five, four, three, two, one. You've been warned. You've been warned. Spider-Man: Far From Home introduces Edith, and Edith is an AI that is Tony Stark. Yeah. What so was it? what was it? what was the acronym for it again? <laughs> I can't remember. It's um, even. Uh, even dead, I'm the hero. Yeah. <laughs> but what's awesome about that, and now that now that you mentioned this, I didn't even think about this until this moment right now. But Edith, the whole note thing in Spider-Man: Far From Home was he was saying, you know, give this to the person that is going to be worthy or whatever. And the whole oh question, God. the question is that like, who's going to be the next Iron Man? And he's saying, it's not me. I'm not going to fill those shoes. But Edith, like you just said, is or like we determined, is an AI that is Iron Man. That looks like they're setting up Ironheart, right yeah, there. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. Like, see, this is the thing. Like, this is the same thing. Like when Ryan and I did our video, like we came up with this thing. Like, holy cow, they could do this. And that's like, here's another one. Like, I didn't even see that coming. Like, here's this guy knows. He's, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> no way, dude. Are you kidding? I think what's beautiful about these bro talks is that like, like your your knowledge for comics is like way way up here. No, and I have I have a knowledge for comics that is probably close. But the fun thing about this is that a lot of our knowledge strengths 
mm. are not overlapping ones. Mm -mm. And so when we come together, we fill the gaps. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's like that's why the bro bro talks are so much fun is because we get to bounce these ideas. Like I hadn't thought one second about Ironheart because I didn't know her origin. I didn't know her story. When you told me that and you told me that her AI is Iron Man, that clicked. And so now it it's not it's not just like a fan theory in that it's what could they do. It's what does it look like they are doing? Yeah. You know, like when we perceive when we see the movie, what do we perceive is there? You know, and so that's that's the fun thing is like now that you mentioned that Edith, dude, that's Ironheart on the way. I didn't even uh, yeah. That's the funny part is like I, I have this like comic out that is like comic news, and one of them says like RG, RG, RDJ wanted Ironheart, and I was like, eh, I could talk about this. I had like circled like eh, I could talk about this. Yeah. And now I'm thinking like well maybe I should because of that. Just wow. wow. Yeah. And people people were talking a while ago like they don't know if um. Like if they're gonna adapt Shuri to be Ironheart, I don't think they're going no. to. Shuri's I hope gonna they be a don't. Black Panther. Shuri yeah, I mean, I, she was one of my favorite parts of Black Panther. She was mm. so enjoyable. Her chemistry with Chadwick Boseman was off the charts. It was just awesome and enjoyable. But I think they need her in Black Panther. Oh yeah, because you know, eventually she does become Black Panther, and like the yeah. the king. Uh, uh, T'Challa becomes the king of the ne uh, the Necro Valley or something like that. Like he yeah, becomes the king, king of, of the dead. dead. I think it's called. Well, that Black Panther is the king of the dead. So they they alluded to that in Black Panther when they showed um, Black Panther communing with uh, the soul. It's what we thought at the time was the soul realm or a version of the soul realm. It was Valley of the Dead or Valley of the Kings or whatever it is. It's where it's where the dead are. Black Panther is the ruler of that. Whoever yeah. wields the mantle of the Black Panther and has the power of the Black Panther from the goddess. Um, I'm forgetting what the goddess's name is, but the, the, the Panther goddess they worship. Yeah. Um, that, that allows you to commune with the dead because you rule the dead. So Black Panther, T'Challa has that. They just didn't really get very much into that. I'm hoping that uh, Mephisto is a character. They even, yeah, they put him in there. They need for, to. For Doctor Doom's sake, for Doctor Strange's sake, for um, uh, like Loki's sake, I, for Spider Man's sake, it actually another. We'll we'll talk about this another time. I believe that Spider Man Three will will possibly either involve or elude to Mephisto because what happens at the end in the end credits, and I know we've done a ton of spoilers already for Far From Home, but yeah. well, I don't know when you're releasing this, but I mean. <laughs> yeah whatever i mean it's it's after it's after it's already come out it's had a week you know so yeah. i mean I, I we gave fair warning it's like mute or whatever and maybe i'll even add a quick little video intro just saying there's a couple moments where we give a spoiler warning you have that time to turn down your volume blah 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 but i don't know it, it's it'll be fine but i think that uh what happens to peter at the end of far from home with mysterio if you know what i'm talking about at the very very end yep i remember i was i was i was shocked when my wife and i were both shocked at that we were like they just did that yeah did they like, seriously just do that we'll call it we'll call it the doxing oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but the doxing man that leads to an encounter with mephisto on huh. on um spider-man's part so another spoiler warning five four three two one ready um is uh when he gets outed a lot of the villains start to attack him and they come after him at school and at home and all kinds of stuff. It becomes a living hell for him. But someone eventually, I think it was the Kingpin eventually gets to um, Aunt May and Aunt May dies. And um, is this, is this, Oh, I think I know this series. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember it either. I, I know it's like a big one, like born something. I can't remember, but he has to like, he, yeah. he's always oh, he's at school. So he's not married yet. No, he's not. He's not married, but he is in love with with MJ. And so what they do is he after he loses um, May Parker, he then uh, makes a deal with Mephisto. Yep. And so he seeks out Mephisto and makes a deal to bring her back. And there's there's a random consequence that's going to come of that. The consequence is that he never met MJ. That's what it was. Yep. And yep. so I remember in that, order I... to, I couldn't remember if it was they were married and that marriage didn't happen or if it was something where I just remember he doesn't remember MJ. And that's when like Gwen Stacy comes into play. Right. And I think what they might be able to do as a fun twist in this in this series in the MCU is because Zendaya's playing 
Michelle Jones. Mm-hmm. He's invested all this time and interest into her. In the third film, we might see that really come to fruition. Aunt May might die, and then he might seek a deal. And then he never met Michelle Jones. This could lead to him meeting Mary Jane Watson. Okay. Michelle Jones is not Mary Jane Watson. She's Michelle Jones. So she plays the role of MJ. It's an adapted character to kind of emulate that role. But she's not the girl next door. That's true. She's not... She's not the the perky redhead that he loves. Even though, like in the premiere, she's not like have red hair and everything else. They've well, she uh, she dyed her hair after in the movie. After, yeah, her. after the yeah, I know after that. But yeah. I mean, it, that for that could have been for fun. That could have been just yeah, because she looks know. good in red hair. I mean, it could you know it could be any number of reasons. But I think that they could either do an actual Mary Jane Watson, which a lot of fans would really like to see. A lot of fans would be sad about. Uh, Michelle Jones. I actually really grew to like her in Far From Home. Yeah. But um, but they could also, like you said, do Gwen Stacy. So that could jump there. Or what would be even crazier is if, and I, I thought this wasn't going to happen because of the Sony talks. Okay. But and the Sony confirmations that then fell through, but they fell through. I think that this could lead to a Black Cat scenario. Okay. And that. And that, again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, would tie back to Captain America, the first Avenger. That would tie into Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk is necessary for the death of Aunt May. Um, you I know, hope they bring back. I hope they bring back. Vincent, Vincent. D'Onofrio. Oh, they better. He, he was, was the legend. perfect iteration. He played the perfect iteration of Kingpin. Like, I didn't think there was a perfect villain role until I watched yeah. that. And I was like... This guy's got it down to a science. I mean, just seriously, dude. Just, he picked up a comic. You know, you know the people who actually know how to do an actual good like rendition and have actually done their research, right? Which, yeah, I mean, and when the, when when you watch, did, yeah, it's a it's a fearless, borderline soulless beefcake that understands his limitations and his powers but is a strategic mastermind. Oh yeah. And he's just the he's the coldest most calculating bad dude in Hell's Kitchen and he knows it. And he's like he's gunning for Spidey dude. That's the cool thing too is he was a, originally he's a Spidey villain. He wasn't a Daredevil villain. He was adapted into basically a villain of anyone in New York City. Yeah. Who was getting in his way. But he's a Spider-Man villain. And um uh, Heavily involved in the origin story of Black Cat. Heavily involved in the Prowler. Uh, he was responsible for making the Prowler the Prowler. Yep. And we know that they've already done Aaron Davis in the comic – or I'm sorry, in uh, the MCU yep. uh, as Donald Glover. But he's not the Prowler yet. He's a low-level street thief and he was trying to bargain for some tech in Homecoming when Spider-Man disrupted the trade. But um, I think that that will go all the way if they introduce Kingpin. I'm really excited. They could, and and they could bring Miles Morales in there too. You know, because Prowler is the uncle of Miles Morales. I mean, that's the one yeah. thing I when I when I saw that in Homecoming, I was like, they've just confirmed that Miles Morales is around. Yeah, dude. And they, I, he I'm, said he even said, "I got a nephew," and it's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, "I got a nephew in Queens, man." Oh, oh I I, I lost it. Like I, my wife was like, "What is so big deal about the nephew?" I'm like, "It's another Spider-Man." She's like, "There's another Spider-Man." I'm like, "Yeah." And he looks cool. Yeah, there's like 19 of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, don't get me into the Spider-Verse. No. <laughs> oh, could you imagine, man? Like, live-action Spider-Verse? Oh, Jesus. Like, like 2099. Ben Riley, Spider-Man North. 2099? You know, like... that would, I, that's, that's, that's what I can't wait to see. Oh, dude. 2099 one. Because I actually He's read it somewhere. Basically, good Batman Beyond for Marvel. See... We need to have another bro talk about the DC things, man, because we can go on that one, man. I could go on tangents on that with that with Batman. Uh, right. Oh, uh, dude, all day, dude. I'm totally down, man. Anytime you want to talk about anything uh-huh. like this, I'm I'm 100 down. I usually like to talk about things that are pertinent to movie news, but honestly, there have been talks about um, a uh, a CGI animated um, Batman Beyond. Oh yeah. Nothing confirmed yet, but there the studios have been considering doing some sort of a CGI animated movie like Spider Verse that was inspired by Spider Verse. Hmm. Um, so like after that came out, that's when the talk started happening. So it'd be interesting. I don't, know if it's, I don't think it's confirmed at all, but 
Hey, there are rumors. A guy, a, a, guy, a guy can dream, man. A guy can dream. I, amen to that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, man, this this whole thing is like I, I could go for days. There's so many more like sightings and quotes um, and, and things that have happened in and throughout the MCU that I think allude to Young Avengers coming. But if you look at the roster of the Young Avengers and you really look at who they are, I think that the the Disney uh, the Disney Plus streaming service uh, announcements alone speak towards the Young Avengers on the way, and then Endgame, of course, has set up uh, a couple of a couple of potential characters in Kate Bishop and Cassie. Um, it's it's looking very good for the Young Avengers. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's all I'm that's all I'm thinking there. All right, I could I could see if we see that. I hope I hope they do that. I mean, it'd be a good use i think of the um disney streaming service if they do that um yeah. it just it just fits <laughs> i mean honestly i mean it, it makes sense it's it's the logical route to go but i mean the young avengers i don't think they actually have a comic line anymore right now so right i think i don't i don't know that that's still running no it's not that's what that's i i i i've followed i haven't heard anything from because I still follow the comic news when they talk about you know singles and stuff, and I've, I haven't heard anything from about Young Avengers in a long time, so right. I don't know what happened with them. I got to figure that out. But um, yeah, that's the way I would I could see it going, and mm-hmm. I hope it does. Yeah, I mean I I really hope that they do. It's a it it's something that I think they're going to be wanting more and more and more of, um, for good reason. Is like younger heroes, mm-hmm. they're going to want um. They're going to want a good mix of male and female characters. They're going to want uh, diversity, you know, different skin colors, rep- ethnic representation and all that stuff. And that's a team that would do that. And it's on it's on their fingertips right now. Mm. You know, they have all they have all the rights back to use these characters and they've set it up. They've teed it up just like the mutants. They've teed it up. So it's ready to go in the MCU. And they now have shows that that would allow themselves to introduce those characters immediately if they want as of november 12th when the streaming service launches they could get started on that right away so i think that we're looking at a very vibrant mcu phase four and i think a lot of it is going to they have said that those shows on the disney streaming service are mcu canon 100 percent. oh they have oh i have not I, i didn't hear that part oh wow yeah and so like the hulu stuff is going to be separate but the the just Man, yeah, Ghost Rider's well, separate. Dang it! <laughs> yeah, they're gonna get. Uh, yeah, the Ghost Rider show. Um, they're gonna get like um, uh, Howard the Duck. They're doing. Uh, um, uh, that's an animated <laughs> though. So they have four. No, they have five animated um, TV adult TV series that are going on Hulu. Yeah, from cause, Marvel. Because they're gonna make Hulu basically the adult version of for the Disney streaming service for the Marvel. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a Marvel Adult Swim. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it's like. It's Hitmonkey, Howard the Duck, um, uh, Modoc. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what the fourth one is. I think it was like Dazzler and someone else. Oh, damn. <laughs> They're doing a Dazzler? Oh, my gosh. I think it was. I think it was something like that. It was Isn't like, it she was an X Men? Yeah, she's a mutant. Well, I, I thought it was Dazzler and another person that I hadn't heard of before. But I could be wrong about that. I'll have to verify and someone in the comments will let us know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be cool. And then they're going to have their own crossover of the adult shows. So hmm. all those animated shows will cross over. They're in their own universe. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it, man. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, give you a chance to uh, plug all your social medias and um, all of your like your recent video for like the Young Avengers is awesome. I love that discussion. I think it's called Young Avengers in the MCU. That's correct. Yep. Uh Yep. Um, if you guys want to follow me, I mean, I'm at Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I try to do Instagram. I'm not the greatest with doing pictures and all that stuff. So Twitter and Facebook's where you can get me. Um, uh, mm-hmm. at Comic Man Jake. Um, also follow Those- me on YouTube. I mean, I just I try to post at least once a day on Twitter. It's kind of getting, you know, a little hard with the job and all. You know, right. we don't do these things for you know, we can't do these things for a living. We wish we could, but. 
Right. It, yeah, hopefully one day it'll get that way. But if you guys want, give him. make sure to give this video a like. And also, please visit Comic Man Jake. Check him out for all your comic book needs. He does a lot of videos specifically on comic books. I think you dabble into the movie news too. But your yeah. channel is very heavy into comics, which I think is very unique out here on the platform. Not a lot of people out here doing what you do. Uh, it's a great service, especially for me, so I can come and check out what's going on in the comics if I don't have um, – time to research which stories i think i might like i go to jake and i check him out uh with his approval so uh um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like second it's like secondhand filtering oh yeah yeah oh, dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> humble dude great videos subscribe to comic man jake and also uh let him know down below what you guys thought about this discussion um thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up also, uh, hit the subscribe button on both of our channels to let us know that you guys support us. And uh, be sure to click the, the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you guys can be alerted right away when we, when we go live next time or when we have a discussion. That way you guys don't miss a single thing. Anyways, Comic Man Jake, I salute you, brother. Thank Amen you so much. Buddy. Thank you for coming out. Uh, it was an awesome talk. we got to do this again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, bro. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.